to do this the easy way. Thank very much everybody in here. Most of us know Courtney. Uh, so uh, she's worked uh, on the mic, come blank on me. Where you work? The old Trident building. How's that? So, but uh, I'll, Courtney's going to have to talk to us about their business out there. What's that? Big Snow Recycling. There you go. That's what happens when you turn 70. Be careful about that. So anyway, Courtney Bishop. Um, I think I know just about everybody um, besides the United Way girls. I haven't met you yet. So my name is Courtney Bayshore, and um, I work out at Hicksville Auto Recyclers. Uh, it's a family-run business. We've been in town for, I believe this is our 13th year. So uh, we've been here a while now. Um, what we do out there, we actually, we only deal in the Duramax diesel pickup truck. Um, I know a lot of people, the misconception is we're a, a junkyard and we do a little bit of everything. Uh, we have a lot out there, but we only do the GM and Chevy diesel pickup trucks. Um, those started production in 2001, so everything is 2001 to current. Um, we get in wrecked and salvaged vehicles from all over the United States. Um, try to get them in from down south just to avoid the rust issue. It's easier to dismantle and sell cleaner parts um, without the rust. Uh, but we get them from auctions, individuals, um, companies that are retiring fleet vehicles. Uh, so we, we get them from all over the place. And our main business is dismantling and selling the parts all over the country and internationally, all over the country and internationally. Uh, probably about 70% of our inventory is dismantled and sold for parts. Um, the other 30% once in a while will get in a salvage vehicle that um, hasn't been wrecked very badly or is fixable and um, we'll fix a little something up or we'll sell it as a whole salvage vehicle and have a lot of customers looking for something that they can fix up themselves for their, uh, for whatever they do. Um, we started um, before we moved to Hicksville uh, it was just a, a family operation out of our family farm. Uh, we would buy different vehicles and part them out. I was in high school, my, my dad would buy vehicles and my brother would part them out and I started listing things on eBay for them. And um, you know, my dad was in technology and, and he kind of wanted something a little bit slower pace, was not so, uh, so taxing. And my brother and I were graduating so we, we decided to do it full time. Uh, my stepmother works with us. She does our accounting. My brother does our <coughs> shipping. I do a lot of the sales and my dad does the inventory buying. So um, we've made a family business out of it and uh, we, re we really enjoy it. Um, I brought in a few pictures to show you guys. I know our yard is a little bit of a busy place that I don't know how a, a tour would go over. We got forklifts going in and out and I, we got 16 employees running every which way. Um, so I, I brought in a couple pictures, I'll pass around. I, I took a couple pictures of our outdoor space. Um, we have pallet racking stacked uh, three or four tiers high so that we can save, um, store larger things outside. Um, cabs, beds, frames, heavier things are outside. And then in our warehouse portion, then we store smaller things. Um, we save everything off the vehicle. So we'll, we'll save, of course, engine transmission, um, frames, body panels, um, modules and electronics, interior pieces. Uh, we burn the used oil in the wintertime for heat in that building. And um, any leftover uh, diesel fuel goes in the tractor and the forklifts. So, just about everything is is saved and then what we can't save just sheet metal that is not going to be saved um we get that hauled out by omnisource so everything is uh dismantled organized and then um we list it online to be sold all over the country so i'll pass around these pictures a little bit like i said it's uh, a couple pictures of our yard here how we like to store things out back. I know when you just go by on the road, you can't really see how we have every, every, how we have everything stored and organized in the back lot. So I took a couple pictures of that for you. And then uh, of our warehouse, um, we had a truck in the bay this afternoon before I came that was getting tore down. You can see how we tear that down. I put those pictures in there. So 
I'll pass these around so you guys can look at them while I'm talking a little bit. Um, yeah, so like I said, um, online is primarily our sales. Probably 60 to 70 percent of what we sell is all online and shipped and sent out all over the country. And then, uh, you know, 30 or 40 percent of walk in customers or people picking up locally. We do all of our polling ourselves, so it's not like your typical junkyard where you come in you got to bring your tools and pull um, you know most of our customers are calling in they're looking for a very specific part they're looking for a nice clean part to put on a work truck or a truck that they use for hauling vehicles um, so good used clean part will pull that and have that ready for the customer yeah any specific reason you only stuck with diesel well one we don't have any more room <laughs> but um, we just found that knit that niche, and uh, we decided to go with it. Um, it's easier for our inventory system uh, when we're dealing with the same type of truck and the, the same vehicle. Um, it's easier for our salespeople that we have working with us now um, to, to know the product and to know the part. They know the ins and the outs and what gears will fit what fitment. Um, it's easier for our teardown guys when they're tearing down the exact same thing every day. They, those guys in the yard, that, that's all we do is the Duramax, so they really know them inside and out. So when a customer comes in looking for something, then our whole staff is so knowledgeable on that because we only do that one kind of vehicle. We found with the, the diesel market, the guys running these diesel trucks, these light duty diesel trucks, they're do it yourself type guys. They're the farm guys, they're the hot shot haulers that are hauling campers or construction, landscape. Um, they're looking, when their truck goes down, they're not looking to buy something new and they're not looking to buy a brand new part from GM. So a lot of them are looking for just a, a good used part to repair their vehicle and get their small business up and going. And I think that's probably 75% of our customer base is small businesses powering their, their small business by a, like a light duty Duramax or a diesel like this. Yeah. I was just going to ask a personal question. I was thinking yeah. you were pregnant the last time that you were here. Yes, um, <laughs> we are one week away from six months. So my Aww. little little boy, Judd, and uh, he's six months old now. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, one boy and one girl. You got the girl in the business yet? <laughs> she, she has a little desk in my office and she loves to come in and uh, boss around the shop boys and make sure we're doing everything right. She loves to be in there. The thing is, I bought like the tail light for a truck and stuff like that. You know, used tail lights versus brand new ones. They didn't have used tires and End of visit if you get a chance to get through this place. It's awesome. It really is. And Tom also was it I don't know if it was a senior project or what you did when you were in school for your first vehicle. Yeah, my family my dad always kind of parted out some wrecked vehicles. Growing up that's when we lived on the, the farm and uh, he would not always the, the diesels, but just anything that we could buy wreck and part out and sell and make a little bit of money. And as my brother and I got older, we enjoyed doing that with them. And um, so that's what we did our junior class for to raise money for prom. Then instead of selling the Avon or selling the different fundraisers that you can sell, then we bought a, a wrecked vehicle that we were, we were doing the Subarus at the time instead of the diesel trucks. So we bought a wrecked vehicle and um, I think 50% of my class was four county students. So most of the four county guys did the tear down and then all of us girls in our class listed everything on eBay and that's what we did for our junior class project. And so we've been doing it a long time. Just we, we found our niche, we parted out a lot of different vehicles and we, we finally found our niche in these diesel trucks. In your first vehicle, did your dad tell you you could build it or whatever? Of course, yeah. I don't think that I've ever had a, a vehicle that hasn't been a salvage vehicle at one time. But yeah, my first vehicle was a wreck and uh, I had to go pick all my parts for repair out of the field. It was a little blazer and we were doing blazers then and so we had all the parts I needed. So I had to go pick all my own parts for that repair. 
but yeah, so we've been doing it a long time. Um, we did it out of our family family farm for several years, and the county really didn't like a couple dozen trucks sitting around our yard. So we decided we needed to do it full time, and if we were gonna stick around the area, we needed something to be indoors. We looked at a couple different um, factories and plants that were sitting empty. Um, we looked at the, the Aero building in Bryan, um, and a couple different industrial, empty industrial places, um, you know, in the, Williams in Defiance County and we landed on Hicksville. We thought this building was perfect for what we wanted to do. And um, it, it's been a great facility. And we love Hicks, we love being here in Hicksville. Hey Courtney, yeah. um, when you say international, where is the farthest person <coughs> to reach out to you and test to ship a product? We have a lot of Australian customers. They like to put these Duramax um, engines in boats that they build. Um, so we have a lot of, a lot of customers buying the engines for the boats. Um, all together, we have a lot of conversion customers. A lot of people like to put these Duramax engines in different things. Um, like I said, the Australians, they love to put them in the boats. We've had um, customers call and put them in like old square body trucks or all sorts of race engines, everything. So it's really fun. I think that's one of my favorite things to do is sell to a customer doing a custom project like that. Um, they need the engine and the modules and the wiring and everything to set that up. and it's um, it's fun. It's fun to see everyone's custom project that they do. So Australia is probably the furthest. It's probably not uh, inexpensive to ship them over to Australia. It's that's not. Great. No, if if I set it up through UPS, it, it's like four thousand dollars just shipping alone. Wow. Um, but most of my Australian customers, they're buying a lot of product in the U.S. Um, my my main Australian customer, he has a small farm <coughs> up in Michigan, and we have he has everything shipped there, and then he'll ship things by the container to himself over in uh, Australia. So, how many trucks would you get in in a week? Let's just strap or. It depends on, um, on on what we buy buying season. This week uh, we have ten coming in. This week this week's been kind of a busier week. Some weeks, um, you know one or two, but on a on a busy week, six, six to ten. There's some going in and out of there all the time. Right? Yeah, <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I, engine, um, one thing that we, we did start doing that was different from Teardown, um, we did start rebuilding some of our um, Duramax engines. So with our core engines that we take in, that would be when we sell somebody a good engine and they bring us their bad engine, then we can tear that down, we can send parts to machine shop and have things completely reconditioned. And um, our, we have a head engine builder and an engine clean room in the back and he does some reman engines, some, some brand new reman engines. And that's been, um, that's been a good market for us as well. Our, uh, guy that actually does our reman engines, he's been with us for about 11 years, Dave Fitzcharles. He started working for us when I think he was 15 years old. And now he's our head engine builder and uh, he does a really good job. Now what makes it a Duramax? Is that mainly the engine and the, the bar train? The or Duramax is, actually a is actual, model too? The Duramax is actually just the engine. Okay. It's made by Isuzu. Um, and when we refer to the Duramax, that's technically just the engine. And then the truck model would be the Chevy or the GMC, the Sierra or the Silverado. Um, and then the engine is what they refer to as the Duramax. Okay. Well, it looks like you're expanding. You bought a house as I drive by there every day. Yeah, we have the, we, and we included that house in our fence when we built it around. Um, we do have a tenant in there. One of our um, employees lives in that house. Um, you know, he's he's growing up and uh, he's about to graduate high school. Um, Jaden, he, he goes to high school here in Hicksville. He's about to graduate. Um, you know, in the future, I'm not sure what we'll do with that house. I'm not sure if we'll keep it. You know, if he'll continue living there. I. I think long term probably um i don't see us keeping it i mean it's 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 a little bit run down so i think long term after after our employee no longer wants to live there it'll probably get made into a parking lot or another warehouse 
commit you by the other property or the other side of the creek too? Is that part of yours now? Or? We haven't. I mean, oh. we would like to. Okay. We, we would really like to, and um, we've talked with Bud about it several times. Um, I think he likes to hang out there. That's his <laughs> hangout spot. Um, so, and we enjoy seeing them out there mowing the lawn and tinkering around. So, in the future, we would love to whenever whenever he's ready. But I, I think he likes it right now. Will you take on some birds now that they're there, Max? Is anybody? No. Um, we haven't yet. No, and, and we, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. We we might, um, but probably probably just stick to the pickup truck is what we're what we're good at. We've had a lot of guys buy, you know, the conversions, buy the whole setup, the engine transmission modules, everything um, to, to put into a Suburban. We actually, one of our employees drives a Suburban that's been Duramax converted. Yeah. Why'd you spend so much money on a fence? Did the town make you do that? <laughs> no, we just, and really the, the state wanted us to put up a fence and we've always known that since, since we started. They said it, if you keep everything condensed and indoors, you technically don't have to have a fence. But for our state salvage license, you do have to have a fence if you're going to be storing things outdoors. That's and a they, nice fence. They started warning us. Oh, it's been several years ago, and uh, we knew what we wanted to do. You know, they said put up a chain link fence, and we just the building is so nice. Um, we want to keep it nice. It, it's somewhere we're going to be for a long time. We didn't want the ugly chain link junkyard fence. Um, so we, we saved for a long time. It, it took some saving, but um, we came up with this this fence and nice. it, it matches the building. It keeps everything looking uniform on that block and, and makes it look a lot nicer. And then actually today we have um, big roll up doors at each entrance. We have a big U driveway that goes around the back of the building and we're getting uh, roll up doors at each entrance. So it will be completely sealed off um, hours that were not open. Would you say, correct me if I'm wrong, um, did they slap some emission standards on Duramax like an 08 or 07? They did, yeah. And actually, 01 to 04 was very pre-emissions and then they started in 05, they started to put an EGR on there and, and put it and then recently in 11 they started using that DEF fluid um, and it's just getting to be more and more emissions which it would, would, it would make sense to me if more people are searching for pre-07 or something like that, that most of your guys' calls? Um, it so depends, it one? depends. You know, the GM has discontinued a lot of parts for those older vehicles. And I think that GM is, um, they keep parts in stock. I mean, I don't take uh, my word for Bible here, but I think it's like seven years old. Um, okay. Uh, and anything older than seven years, they're not obligated to produce parts anymore. So we have a lot of people calling for their older trucks. Seven, you know, it's 2024, so 2017 and and older, they're they're not able to find parts as much anymore. So we have a lot of calls for people looking for those older parts that have been discontinued by GM. It, it seems like a lot of your contractors and small time guys kind of seek those out. Yeah, some of those older and uh, truck pulling guys, guys that are gonna do, we don't do anything performance, we are mostly OEM, but guys that are gonna build a race motor or something, then yeah, they're kind of looking for something more like that. Any other questions?